<laughs> it's simple, really. Great stories with a good cup of tea. It's the Tea with Mike show. On this episode of the Tea with Mike show, uh, Brandon uh, joins me. Uh, can we learn about the uh, impact and the importance of uh, creating uh, relationships and connections with other human beings that live on the same planet as us? Uh, so grab a cup of tea, sit back, and enjoy. Hi right, guys, welcome to another episode of the uh, Tea with Mike show. Uh, joining me uh, for this one is uh, Brandon. Uh, welcome to Tea with Mike, Brandon. Thanks, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to see you again, man. All right, so let's just jump right into the show. Do you want to start by telling everyone a little bit about you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Brandon Stone. I'm 23 years old. Um, about a year ago, we just celebrated on June 9th uh, that I launched my clothing line called Ruach. And uh, it's a brand that's all about all of humanity coming alive that it doesn't matter where you've come from, where you've been in your life, there's always an opportunity to come alive. And, uh, you know, part of my story and my testimony is that when I was 16 years old, uh, almost 17, I had my third attempt to at suicide. And it was in that moment where uh, I had finally reached the point of no return. I had no hope and I found myself going down a rabbit hole or a darker place that was even worse. And um, the third attempt to at suicide took me out, um, after I had hung myself with a belt up against my neck and, uh, I was on the floor dead pronounced. I don't know if I was pronounced dead, but I was not waking up from that moment. And, uh, I saw a light breeze past my face and I felt a violent rushing wind come into my bones and into me and breathe me back to life. And it was in that moment where for me, I realized that, God was real. And I realized in my own personal journey that there was meaning to life. And I heard a voice that said, your story isn't over yet. It's only begun. And uh, so I'm here today, 23 years old, to tell that story. Um, but I'm super passionate about people, community, coffee, fashion, music. Uh, the 1975 is my favorite band. I love Lil Uzi Vert and Kanye and all those types of people. Um, but I also love soaking and worship music. And so that's a little bit about me, but I just love people and I love Mike. I love what Mike is doing. It's such an <laughs> honor to be a part of that. And I can't wait to get him on the Fully Alive podcast. That's going to be amazing. No, that, man, that's a, I, um, I need to, I, admittedly, I need to listen, but like even the, even the graphics should have how you promoted it. It's like, ooh. Good. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's a little right. bit about me. Beautiful. Uh, so let's let's start with uh, the music aspect. Uh, so what first kind of got you into uh, music? Oh, man. Uh, well, I grew up listening to metalcore and post-hardcore music. And uh, it's funny, when I was in junior high, actually right before that, I had an intern um, that was part of my church and young adults ministry that he came and lived with us for a year. Oh, and he cool. introduced me to a band called As I Lay Dying, which is super popular, and uh, Demon Hunter. And for me, that was where like I really heard rock music. And for me, that I really connected to that. And so that brought me down to Fort Today, August Burns Red, Architects. I mean, just going down and down and down and even further into that metalcore um, hole, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't until I was probably like, late high school where I started listening to the bands like Issues and Palisades and Crown the Empire and all those different bands and that kind of got me into this whole like kind of spoken word rap type of music and that kind of segued into I mean I grew up listening to Eminem like anybody and Tupac and Biggie and all those guys but um, for me that was where I kind of found like some of the likes of the Lil Uzi, Con Kanye, Travis Scott, Drake, all those types of artists. And so then a couple of years later, I was hanging out with some friends in Redding, California, where I used to live for three years. And I was introduced to the band, the 1975. Um, and actually, I'd say prior to that, I listened to them during Drive Like I Do era, which was before they were the 1975 and blew up, became this phenomenon. Um, and so I've always had music in my blood. My dad's a worship leader. I play guitar. I've been playing for nine, almost 10 years on electric and um, acoustic and all that. And I just love music. I love what music does to people. It brings people together. And 
Um, so I think that for me, that's kind of where it all started. But awesome. I'm in love with music. No, it's awesome, man. And then, so would you say that your uh, father has been quite uh, inspirational in in your journey uh, through music today, both listening and then obviously. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. And it's been cool because, like, every week we get to, like, perform on, on the stage together and do, like, drive-in. Like, during COVID, we had this whole drive-in service. Where, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and it was just the coolest thing. Like, it's the highlight of my life, you know? I get to do music with my dad, and it's super cool. But he's even written some music here and there, and um, I'm just really excited to see that kind of unfold and be a part of that journey instead of just you know, be inspired by other artists, be inspired and be a part of that creative process, you know, with your own family. It's pretty cool. So awesome, man. And then do you want to talk a little bit, what did kind of the the drive through at like church slash music and um, pop? Yeah. What did it kind of look like? <laughs> You're laughing because you know, dude, I told you like the, so we, we actually do like rock music during our offerings, which makes it really different, but it brings in lots of people from the outside. And I think that's the beautiful thing. Like, you know, um, God gave the gift to Axl Rose so that he could create that music, you know, and he gave Kanye that gift. And so for me, like, you know, I love how we get to bring that into church culture. And I feel like it kind of breaks off that box of, you know, being religious and all that kind of stuff, but, um, right. Just, think, yeah. Just interjecting and adding to, to, to that point. Um, I, no, 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 not, not, not really re religious, but like, I would say some of my favorite uh, music, um, is, is the gospel type music. Like when I'm watching like America's got talent and all these big choirs, yes. the spirit and the energy that all these people harmonizing off one another creates. Come on, bro. Yeah, I love that so much. And I think that's the beautiful thing. Like music brings us together, you know, regardless of what we believe. And I think that everyone in their spirit, because everyone has a spirit, feels that. Everyone in their soul can feel that, whether it's, you know, music that brings you down or brings you up. You up. And so what we try to do with our music, um, especially in the times of worship, like we're really driven and like energetic and the neighbors even next door, like we had a couple that were like, Hey, we don't like this, but most of them, they're like sitting on their back porch listening and they're not even religious either. So it's just pretty cool. That will drive in, uh, service was pretty cool. So, so. so you did it. So, so what, so what did you do the drive in from your house? Oh, so we oh, did it church. in our church parking lot. Oh, in the church parking lot? Yeah. We did live stream for a while where we were just live streaming, but we realized that human connection is everything. And so we wanted to do the six feet distance and all that stuff due to Corona and all that. And so we figured out a way that we could be six feet apart and still bring music and, and bring that element. So we still had church. It was pretty cool. Fantastic. And so did, did it feel like normal church service or like, did you, did you guys as the performers or like, and the people even <laughs> And do whatever, whatever blessings, etc. Did, did you feel like you needed to put more energy into? A hundred percent. Like our teardown took over an hour and a half to do versus just showing up and, you know, bringing your instrument, which takes like 10, 15 minutes to get everything going, you know, for everyone's sound check and stuff. So um, it definitely took a lot more energy, but I would say it was well worth it for sure. So. Fantas fantastic man so then so so going away from uh, obviously uh, playing uh, in your local church and what got you into music um how would you kind of describe uh, the music that you create because you you haven't said yet but you're also a singer and a songwriter <laughs> which is pretty gnarly surprise no yeah uh i love ambient melodic beautiful music um when you guys get the opportunity to, you should go listen to the Notes on a Conditional Form, the 1975's newest album. What? Oh, because oh, of... Hang on, before I forget, which 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 link did you send send me? Because I went to listen to it on YouTube, and it was, it was like so cool. I had to listen to it again. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the one. I'm pretty sure that was the one I sent you. Yeah, but um, it's amazing because oh yeah, I sent you Too Shy, 
the like there you the go. 80s vibey one yeah um that's my guitar sound no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i love that um but no like i love i love that like melodic ambient like very easy to listen to but i also love like the jh marshall sound <laughs> so i'm kind of like torn between like super beautiful ambient and like way out there like in your face plexi marshall amps you know that's cool though you like you, yeah. you, you mix both of them together and you get the brandon stone style of music. yeah absolutely i don't think many people are mixing those particular genres of music together that's so cool if you're cool with it i'll even maybe just like link a part of our live stream so that you can hear some of that tonality of the worship and like what that, that like. that would be gnarly yeah. So, cool. so, um, so on the music side, who would you kind of most like to collaborate with? Music wise? Yeah. Dude, I'm just a guitar player, like, you know. Uh, Favorite I mean, guitarist? <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, like, if I could play with anybody, and I know that I'm like being super cliche, but like, you know, Adam Hahn from the 1975 and all that stuff. Paul Klein from Laney is like one of my favorite singers ever. I love Laney. If you've ever listened to their music, like you feel things you've never felt before. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Uh, Paul Klein's voice is very easy to listen to. Um, I joke with my friends about this, but he's almost like the male version of Taylor Swift in his lyrics, <laughs> but it's so relatable and so catchy and like, it catches your ear, you know what I mean? Um, and so for me, like, I grew up in this kind of genre or era of time where that kind of music is just what I connect to. I mean, I just love that type of music. So um, I would say definitely the 1975, definitely Laney. Um, my buddies from Gable Price and Friends just dropped an album that is unreal. It's called Fractioned Heart. And Adam, the guitar player, who um, I know him, but I know Gable probably better than anybody. But those boys, like, their album is ridiculous. And I would love to play with them and do music. That'd be fun. No, don't no, even buy uh, the, 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 the name of the uh, album. I, I'm already picturing, like, very strong, like, graphics and uh, lyrics to support the name of the song. Yeah. Uh, what was the one I did with the skull on it? That was the music, basically, uh, Not Safe. And it's a reference from C.S. Lewis's uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, where it talks about, you know, he's good, but he's not safe. And uh, it says, created by the breath you breathe. Like, that lyric is so good. Um, Heretic is my favorite track <laughs> on the album. Oh, my Lord. Uh uh, offend my mind so that I can know you know who you are break my heart so it looks more like yours like those lyrics and they just you know clash it's awesome so love it so so as well as uh, kind of uh, playing the electric guitar do, do you like play the, all, all, all the other types of guitars like bass guitar etc I've been playing around with bass guitar I actually been realizing the more that I play lead guitar um, I like to, I like to play between like the chord itself and the lead, but I actually, for the last couple of weeks, have been playing almost like these bassy type sounds on my electric. It's weird, like kind of mixing the two, like adding some fuzz noise and stuff like that to it, making it sound really heavy like a bass, but on the guitar. And so uh, I've played bass, I've played keys. Um, I actually love to play the piano. I'm learning how to do more of that. Um, but I started on acoustic, so I'd say, yeah, I can do acoustic. Because I do still have a big heart for the heavy genre. Uh, I used to do screaming in high school. Um, I uh, damaged my voice box for about three years because <laughs> I did it wrong. I was trying to scream here. You're supposed to scream from your diaphragm. Just a fun little fact about What's heavy music. What's what, what scream is it? Scream is it close to like punk and heavy rock? Or oh yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, that okay. Was, like metalcore, hardcore type. But um, yeah, I mean, I I love to do all kinds of things. So 
I've That's played great. mandolin a couple of times. Oh, cool. So that was pretty cool. Well, well, we're already kind of establishing now everything from the, the gospel and the church to like heavy rock music to like rap with Eminem, <laughs> et cetera, and then to Kanye, which is a little bit different because he's going in a different direction. Yeah, to absolutely. To what he uh, used to do, used to kind of do. So like when you're writing your own music, do you want to talk a little bit about the creative process? Sure. I mean, I haven't even come out with a single yet. I just sit at home and create and, you know, um, I do so much with our worship team that what we primarily do now is we'll take a track from an actual song and we do stick to the original, but we love to make it our own. And so I've been practicing like day and night, you know, these different songs and trying to make them something different. And it seems like the more that we sit in a peaceful setting and just like not striving to see it happen, that's where beautiful music comes from. That's where that kind of music kind of comes out. And so, so you're, you know, saying, you're saying that you, you, you should keep it natural and, natural, and, take yes. and not try and like, like force the process. Yeah, I think that with anything, you shouldn't force the process. Um, I think natural is the best thing that you can do when it comes to creativity. With If you're picking up, you know, a paintbrush to a canvas, it should be a really beautiful, simple process. And well, let's, you know, strokes come together instead of forcing it. But I think that's where the best music is made. I think that's where the best art is made, for sure. So, so, so Cool. So what are some of the goals that you have with your own personal music? When it comes to the music aspect, I really want to come out with a single. Um, I wrote a song called Symphony. It's been sitting in my phone notes for a long time. And I feel like it's finally time to let that one out. I wrote a song called Oh Death, which sounds really metal, but... It's a song about death losing its sting and like negativity and not having dominion over our life. Um, I would love to play that for a stadium and like do that live because it just has this energy to it that I haven't heard yet with uh, Christian, rock, gospel, contemporary, secular, non-gospel you know like it really is its own thing so um, i'm really excited to kind of work on that and put that one out eventually um yeah and then the other thing like i really want to get a pod go i don't know if you know what that is but it's a line six pedal board it has the helix presets just like the thousand dollar you know fifteen hundred dollar helix uh but it's a little bit smaller and i can take it on the go anywhere um, right now I have a Pod XT, which if anyone knows guitars, you know that that's a very old board. But I've been using the Pod XT and the OCD V2 pedal for a long time. And I've been able to use that to create. And so when people sit down with me and they're like, want they know my creative process, I'm like, it's very basic. Like you just use what you have and you're able to make it. So nice. So for those people, including myself, that aren't as familiar, what, like, what is a pedal board? What does it kind of look like? And how does it fit into the process? Sure. Because most people probably imagine, oh, here's, here's, here's my guitar. It's plugged into my amplifier. Probably. Yes, right. Oh, and, oh, and now often the amps even have the recording buttons on, correct? Totally. Yeah, so what a lot of people do, I would say nowadays, is they do a lot of it on the computer, it's preset, they, they've been messing with the tones and the knobs and all that stuff on the computer, and then they plug it into um, uh, the XLR, which is a yeah. box, and yeah, and then they can record it, and then they can play around with it. Um, right, on the computer. That, the... Right, everything that we do on a Sunday morning is live, so... Every week, just about, I'm tweaking the board and tweaking patches to make it sound better to fit. Um, so my pedal board specifically has an amplifier built into it. It's like an amplifier modulation, modification that makes what's coming out sound like an amp. It's not the actual amplifier, but it has the circuitry and sound of what that would do. So if you're pushing it, the overdrive on it is gonna have that overdrive. 
um, et cetera. If you're trying to make a really tinny, quiet sound, it makes that tinny, quiet sound. Gotcha. Uh, so that's one. And then your next is your stomp box, which is basically um, like your cabinets and your like your other ampli uh, modifications to that. They would add more of an oomph to it, a drive to it. Um, and mine has a modulation and a delay button. And the modulation is your chorus effect, your reverb, all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then your delay is specifically your delay. Um, I like to play with the dotted eighth note, Bethel music, Elevation, a lot of those artists got that from other rock bands, <laughs> you know? And so now they're bringing that into contemporary, nowadays modern worship music. And I just love the way a dotted eighth sounds. So that's what I use for delay. Um, mixed with a Marshall amp sounds pretty cool. So, <laughs> but yeah, there's four, there's basically four boxes or four different things that you can adjust with that. And then on top of that, I have an overdrive pedal so that when I push it out with my volume pedal, it really packs a punch. My leads really pack a punch. So, and, and, and an overdrive pedal is that exactly what it sounds like a keyboard player has a, sometimes a right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of the same process, yep. Okay. Yep. I'll sound yep. a little bit knowledgeable there. Okay, cool. Oh, great. <laughs> also, I love it. I love that you're asking because, I mean, it's taken nine months to a year to a couple of years for me to figure all this stuff out. So. Right. Great. So then do, do, you, do you want to talk a little bit then, just because you brought up that, that point about the importance of research and kind of not giving up at the first hurdle? Yes, I think that no matter what you're doing, whether it's fashion, it's art, it's creating music, it's working together with the team, you should always be pushing yourself further. You should always find ways to stay ahead of the curve, to always find ways to adapt to what you're doing, adapt to what you're creating, and then on top of that, um, don't be afraid to make your own flavor, your own sound, your nice. own creativity. Um, I was showing Mike on our last Instagram video of my uh, Crown the Empire vest that I've had since I was 16 years old. And uh, a lot of people ask me, like, when people come over, various people are like, hey, what's the point of that? Like, why have you kept that for so many years? And I'm like, because one day... I'm going to have my own patches. I'm going to have my own this. I'm going to have my own that. And so now, you know, we're at the point where we're getting ready to come out with our own Ruach patches. And so for me, it's like a reminder to keep pushing myself to see that dream come true. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my whole philosophy in life. I mean, you should always be pushing yourself every day to be more excellent. And I think what often happens with people who are younger especially is the laziness aspect of it comes in where it's like, oh, I've already done this. I know how to do it. Um, an example, I'm learning Photoshop and Illustrator to do yeah. it right, like an actual graphic designer instead of doing it through like Procreate and free software, which is where I started from. Um, and I've done the same graphic 19 times over the last few weeks just adding a couple of differences to it to make sure that I have that consistency because in the end, that's going to matter. Oh, awesome. And then, so that's a fantastic transition into talking about Ruark. So do you want to, <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to uh, start by giving a little bit of the backstory to uh, Ruark and also how it came out of your own uh, personal story? And I would really love connect, to. And really connect the two together. Yeah, and I would love to just say that Mike, out of so many people on the internet and different people I've connected with, other than Eric Lopez, who's on my team, uh, he really has been one of the most consistent people in learning and finding out more about like this movement and what it's really about. Because from afar, it can look very dark and and uh, uh, yes, that was really impressions. I'm like, what's this? <laughs> Um, but you know, like I've, I've talked with a lot of people recently, even yesterday about this very conversation. And, you know, my hope is that it pulls people in 
it pulls people to want to search it out more and to actually understand. And um, I would just say for me, like, you know, Ruach is a part of my story. Um, fun fact, my first tattoo was Ruach. And Ruach, not just, you know, with a Christian view, but Ruach is a, the breath of God, but it has over 375 meanings. And it has more than that in the Old Testament and New Testament. But it's also in the Hebrew um, text, the original Hebrew text. And so the Ruach is the breath. The Ruach is the wind. The Ruach is the spirit that takes what's dead and breathes it back to life. It's, you know, the, the wind of change. It's the wind that moves, that breathes, that um, it's the power connected to the breath. I mean, there's so many. It's so deep. Well, why, why does it have 300, 375 uh, plus different meanings? Because Ruach in its essence is spirit. Okay. Which is why, you know, the spirit is for everyone to come alive. The breath for everyone to come alive. And um, the spirit is a very deep word. Um, in Buddhism and, and New Age theology and all these different things, there's a lot of description. There's a lot of depth and meaning. Um, it doesn't encapsulate the full picture. And Ruach as a whole is about um, unity. And Ruach is about um, creativity. It actually is the breath of creativity. is the spirit of creativity. And so um, not just with a teaching moment, so to speak, but there's an entire post on our page where it shows the three um, Ruach logos. And um, it has the Hebrew word and the definition and all that kind of stuff. And it goes really in depth about that. So if you want to know more about that later, go on the Instagram and find it, or you can message me or Michael and I'll get that to you. Um, but yeah, so Ruach came from a moment for me. Um, Ruach led up to this moment, I would say. I mean, Ruach okay. has been a, a dream for 10 years. Anyone that tells you that you have a dream and, you know, uh, it happens overnight is lying to you <laughs> because, you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of depth that comes into that. There's a lot of vulnerability that goes into making a brand. There's a lot of pain. Um, and some of the greatest joys of my life have been from this last year and really seeing this come to be something. Um, but it ultimately came from a moment in my history where that spirit, that breath, that life became real to me. And Ruach... Almost, almost the moment of the last breath, right? It was, yeah. It was my last breath where I was breathed into. And uh, the original uh, design where it says, breathe into me that I may live again, I mean... I'm wearing my jacket, my hoodie, you can't really see it, but um, the whole breathe into me that I may live again is actually from Ezekiel 37 in the story of the Valley of the Dry Bones where, where God speaks to Ezekiel, who's the prophet of the time, and says, this is a vision of the children of Israel who are dead, and I want you to use your voice to speak to that for them to come alive. And if we read, I mean, if you actually read the story, it goes on, goes on, and it says, and they were with, with sinews, and they had flesh upon them, but they were without any breath. And it was there where the Ruach, the breath of God came in, and it says they instantly became an army and came together. And I feel like that really is the mantra or the mindset of Ruach, the you may feel like your story's over. You may feel like a valley of dry bones. But through that breath, we can come alive. Oh, I'm sorry. And we can... Just by the camera, you can come alive. <laughs> yeah. Just, it was the wind, guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so for me, that was where that became real to me. And so um, just the design itself took nine... 
probably eight, nine months, every night sketching, drawing, going back, going back, going back, going back over it. And then finally one night in a span of three, four hours, it was done. And I was like, okay, that's it. And that, and that totally links back to uh, the earlier point when you were talking about the creative process um, for, 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 for your uh, music about not forcing the process. Yeah, and it's all about consistency, you know? Anyone that wants to build a big brand overnight, I mean, you can buy followers, you can have the look of being this thing, but if there's no backbone to it, there's no consistency. And that's what I really appreciate about what Mike's bringing to the table. He is so consistent in the way that he's brought um, this community together. And even for me to be on this show today, like I was talking to him about doing this, you know, a little bit ago, and it's just like, man, this is such an honor because I know the impact he's making on these people, on each of you guys. And it's amazing how he's able to take his vision and cultivate that and bring people together. And uh, yeah, it's just such an honor. But like I said, yeah, that's where Ruach came to be. So. And then do you, did you want to elaborate? Because it kind of ties into where I want to go next about people uh, being at uh, the backbone of a brand. So how how is people important in the in the values and everything <laughs> Ruach stands for? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to talk about like the personal aspect of that? Do you want that to talk about like why we need people to be a part? Like what what's your? Uh, well, favorite? let's let's go uh, first. Kind of the role that because explain a little bit about the operations of Ruach. How there's multiple team members. And then, and then go a little bit more broadly on how uh, people and community are important to, I guess, branding. No, I love that. Yeah, uh, we do have a very, <laughs> I'm laughing because he knows, but uh, we have a very special way of doing things in Ruach. And what I mean by that is um, the 12 people on my team, I have had relationship with. They're people that I trust. They're people that, you know, I'm not just giving away login info. I'm like, or creating emails for them, you know, like I was talking about today, but like these people are my family, you know, like we do life together. And so um, the funny thing is each of them I've met, like Teresa, for example, she's from the Netherlands. She doesn't live in Roseburg with me, you know, uh, <laughs> Eric Lopez lives in Washington. So it's like different people are from all over, you know. Um, and I think like Dustin's in Texas. So all these people that are on my team are people that are from various places, but I've built connection relationship with, and that goes to show the power of social media that goes to show the power of connection that goes to show that, you know, no matter where you're at, you can make lifelong friendships through communication and, you know, you have to be intentional for sure. <laughs> Yes. But, uh, and Mike's really good at that, guys. Like, really, he's really good at that. And, uh, you know, so for us, it's it's really all about cultivating that connection so that every human being that comes to be a part of Ruach feels like they belong, not just they're a part of a brand, not that they're just a follower. I hate that. Oh, I hate that so much. It's like, you know, you have... 1600 followers it's like okay those are 1600 human beings that have interacted and with their own together. story right and they have their own story they have their own testimony they have their own depth and uh i wrote this on the website but um you know i always wanted to have a place where every human being could feel known could feel accepted and loved and um our team is family you know, we are family. And so just to end off and kind of segue into what you were talking about, I think that the best way to build a brand is to actually interact and connect with these people because each and every one of them have a, a heart. Each of them have a spirit. Every one of them have a soul and passions and desires. And, you know, what I feel like what separates Ruach from the masses, part of it is that we capitalize on people's creativity. Like Ruby, she's really into uh, kind of like that graphic blogging slash 
love for people and connection. So I'm like, okay, you're going to connect with people. You're going to, and you know, the spiritual aspect of that, she prays for our brand and like ask God for strategy. And I'm like, okay, like I'm appointing you to do that because I know that that's your strength. That's a gift God's given you, you know? And for me, like, I never thought that I would ever be able to build a website or, or, you know, do graphic design and all these things. But my encouragement to you guys, I hope is that you begin to step out of your comfort zone and, and step out and risk and try things that are really, uh, scary, (laughs) really uncomfortable. Uh, because when you're placed in the chair for a season, you're appointed you're made to like Mike. He's meant to sit in that chair. I'm meant to sit in this. I am. I'm too. I'm meant to drink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're sitting in chairs, right? Like quite literally. But um, it's this whole metaphor of like when you're appointed to be a part of something, it's for a season. It's for a reason. And there's a um, a grace, a power, a energy that's released so that you can impact people's lives for such a time as this. You know, that's, so. Yeah, that's really cool. And, and just quickly on the, on talking about risk and stepping out of your comfort zone, on the last episode of uh, Tea with Mike with the B, B, B2 Wins and musical duo from Brazil, they were literally uh, saying the same thing, how they went from um, the, the violent streets of Brazil to end up uh, like playing with Snoop Dogg. And right, cool play. So just drawing a little context and parallels. And how it it works if you take risks and step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I think that's the greatest thing we can do in our life is tell your testimony, right? Like use your voice. Um, Go after the dreams in your heart and live 100% you without anything holding you back. It doesn't matter what the voices say. It doesn't matter what you say to yourself. It's all about you Focusing on that vision, being so dead set on that, and believing that that's going to make a difference in one way or another, and having that mindset, like vision, voice, and victory, the three V's of Ruach, you know, I really believe that. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then just expand a little bit on kind of how long it's been how long it's been around and if there were any defining moments that helped bring it to life oh i'd love to yeah um well i would say it's been at least a 10-year dream i mean i remember being very young like you know 11 12 13 years old and always saying to myself i'm gonna have a clothing line one day i'm gonna create clothes that you know have the look of of negativity but bring life i i was telling you about zoomies and Paxson and hot topic and like that whole thing like so there's a there's an exercise that you can do when you're um, building a brand you're building a business and they say you want to imagine yourself being that customer like you want to put yourself in the shoes of the customer okay And so what I did was I thought of the 12, 13 year old kid that listens to Juice World and, uh, you know, Lil Uzi and Kanye and all those kids. But they also maybe love a little bit of rock here and there. And they like to jam to the Bring Me the Horizons and, and you know, all these different bands. Right. And somehow, some way they come into Zoomies. And they're looking on the shelves. And I've told you this before, like, I love Sketchy Tank. I love Lurking Class. Like. You know, I love all those different brands that are skater brands, Thrasher. And so I imagined myself walking into there and picking from all these different things and just not really feeling right about it. Like it didn't speak to me. And I saw this kid grab the Ruach t-shirt and he put it on and all of a sudden that depression left for a second. That hopelessness went away. He began to dream. He began to see things he never saw before. And it was in that moment where he was like, I have to buy this. I don't know why, but I have to buy this. 
And so the kid gets up to the checkout and he's checking out and he's like so stinking excited to get home and, you know, wear his brand new Ruach t-shirt. And he goes back into his room and he's looking on the bed, looking at this t-shirt, thinking to himself, like, well, I don't know why I bought this, but like just so captivated by it. And on the back, it says, breathe into me that I may live again. And in that moment, that depression ceases. That anxiety goes away. I wanted to build a brand that would end suicide. I wanted to build a brand. Our heartbeat is to end these things. Not to, not to uh, help bring awareness. We hear that word a lot, um, especially with like racial and social injustice and different things going on and um, all those things. But for every human being to access life, and that, for me, changed everything. That changed the game. And so instead of trying to reach a bunch of people for a cool design, it became about customer to customer. I would sit in coffee shops with kids, tears in their eyes about why this design meant so much to them and spoke to them. And all of a sudden, you create not a following, but you create a conversation that begins to speak for all humanity. Because each and every one of us have experienced moments of brokenness, weakness, lack in our life. Yes. But when we discover that passion, what's really inside of us, all of a sudden the game changes. We come alive. And so for me, that really was, I feel like, one of the defining moments of Ruach being what it is. Ooh. Love it. I've given Ruach t-shirts to homeless kids on the street. <sighs> Sorry. That's good, man. That's authentic. That's real. You know, um, you see videos on TikTok of, of guys coming up with sandwiches and like videoing them, like handing the sandwich to the homeless guy and it gets like millions of views. And part of me, it's amazing, you know, but the intentionality of no one seeing it. There's intentionality in that. Right. You know? And, uh... Because it's I, about the... Yeah, because sometimes you feel like people are doing it for, for the views and the hits, which is why they're recording it, too, right? This is going out there and doing it a few times in the local area. Absolutely. And uh, the testimonies that have come out of Ruach are just... I mean, they're on the page. You can look at them, but it's just phenomenal to see just the start, <laughs> just the start, you know? And so anyone that's watching this video, I don't know if this is going to be today, tomorrow, three months, a few years from now, you know, uh, your dreams matter. And choose to create something with life and intention Choose to use everything that you've been given and watch what happens. As you partner with the creator of the universe, you partner with yourself, you partner with people around you who believe in you. People like Mike, right? These people that really believe in who you are will see the world changed. I really believe that. We'll see suicide end. We'll see... Um, the whole thing with the Pornhub that just came out with the whole uh, racial injustice, or not racial injustice, but Exodus cry and all those types of things. And then you have racial injustice going on, lack of unity between pride and straight and all these different mindsets. But if we would all come together and actually realize that love is the key, realize that going after your dreams and pursuing those things and actually believing in one another instead of trying to compare the boxes we would see the world changed. Fantastic. Yeah. And so uh, let's take a little pause. And yeah, sorry. <laughs> so deep. Uh, yeah. No, I, I feel like it too. It's, it's good. This is real. This is not scripted. This is, this is conversation. Hashtag create. Hashtag create. Hashtag Ruach. <laughs>
Are you Woo. 58, buddy? <laughs> Just I know, it didn't again. That's terrible. Fantastic. So, uh, the, the tea fact for the episode is the Ritz Carlton of Hong Kong has the world's most expensive high tea meal at a price of 8,888 uh, Canadian dollars uh, per couple. And that comes from factretriever.com slash tea facts. Wow. That's nuts, dude. That is crazy. And if you think about it, it's only for like a few hours too. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> and, and, and there's... Yeah, it must be strange because it's only so good you can like make anything like tea, the food, you know. <laughs> so you pay for the experience, That's I guess. Awesome. Awesome. So then, uh, oh, we losing the plan. Yeah, let's do something light, man. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get so deep so quick. No, no, no. Oh, uh, all right, I'll switch it up because the next one was like it's too deep, so. So, so what, what are some kind of uh, future goals that you, that you, yeah, that you have? Any, any, oh, this is fun. Do you have anything on your bucket list items? You want to jump out of a plane? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have not been to Paris. I'd love to go to Paris. I would love to see the Louvre. I would love to look at. I've been the Louvre. is fantastic. Really? That's yeah, what I hear. I My friend Paris. Teresa, she said the same thing. Um, you know, I, I would honestly love to like see Van Gogh's original paintings. Fun fact, my art that you see or whatever it's called, um, (laughs) the graphic design, like style is very much from Van Gogh. Van Gogh inspired me from the time I was really little, even to now. And my dad went to Vegas with uh, Christy, my stepmom and I have a great relationship with them and we're sitting down looking at photos and he's like look at this Van Gogh painting it's like not a super famous one but look at it I'm like wow you know like drooling you know it was just super awesome but yeah that is definitely one of them um I would love to make clothes with Jerry Lorenzo from Fear of God Virgil from Off-White I mean all these juggernauts of fashion that would be dope yeah we, oh yeah we never kind of talked about it like what, what do you love about fashion what do i and love how does that tie fashion? back into you just being a creative all around it <laughs> thank you man i appreciate that um well what do i love about fashion i think fashion has the ability to create a conversation of who someone is without them saying a word. Right. You know, like uh, the person that's covered in diamond earrings and all that stuff, like probably speaks of someone who's wealthy or maybe has a mindset of, you know, this is who I am. This is what I see of myself. Like when I see kids with like these punk outfits and like, you know, uh, like leather jackets, ripped up denim, all that kind of stuff. Like, I love it because I'm like, they're so different. Um, I was talking with my buddy Nathaniel the other day and he was wearing like green skinny jeans or I don't know if it was green skinny jeans or what. I knew he had a camo thing on. Anyway, but like just super like out of the box and I love it. I think that's why Youngblood is one of my favorite people from the UK because he's so different in his fashion. And my buddy Liam from other UK um, has actually dressed up Youngblood and Machine Gun Kelly and all these amazing other artists. Like, it's amazing. But yeah, I think fashion has the ability to share a conversation that words could never say. Interesting, but just on that very statement, do you you not think that also sets a dangerous precedence? and it like pre- prejudges people and all that sort of thing and puts people in a box when really I was just it, having this has... conversation with my mom this morning fantastic well she's definitely gonna see, see what our conversations like then. i know yeah and i was telling her like you know just because a guy wears black painted fingernails doesn't necessarily mean that he's emo <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, very true yeah and so 
Yeah, I think there is a danger. I think fashion has a lot of danger to it. And I think that's why we should always ask people. And that's why we shouldn't always assume that we know someone's story before we've heard it. Um, I think that's really important. So, yeah. And it also, also not ties that nicely uh, together how you kind of uh, need, they, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Because, okay, I don't know where I'm going with this, but every, you, have to add, you have to have the conversation and there's lots of different factors that are basically a part of someone's story. I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And then... Anything, do you have anything else on your bucket list? Oh, man. Uh, I would love to go to Hawaii. I haven't been to Hawaii. I have a couple of friends that, like, did school in Kona. And oh, I was, like, cool. low-key jealous. <laughs> Hashtag low-key jealous. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would love to direct a film. I think that that could be really cool. Just just any film, though? Uh, yeah, true. I guess I should probably expand upon that. Uh, some of my favorite movies are like the new King Arthur is like so good. Legend of the Sword. If you haven't seen that, go watch that movie. Um, the new Harriet movie like brought me to tears. That was a phenomenal movie. Um, yeah, I'm a avid Pirates of the Caribbean, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I love Pirates Star of the Caribbean. I mean, like, some of the older stuff now. Movie. I guess it's getting old, isn't it? Some of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I love, I love those types of movies that really encapsulate like the characters really well and tell that story. Um, I just, yeah, I love, I love that kind of. You love, you see, you see like storytelling people at uh, the creative, like, yeah, they just all interlink between all of these different areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I love how you like point it out too, because. I think that's one thing you're really good at. Is I'm getting better people. for sure. You're like, the hey, more, the more you do did it. You notice this connects to this, and actually, this is this. And it's like, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. And then, as we kind of uh, come to the end of our uh, impactful uh, conversation, because I always love the chemistry and synergy between us. Um, what do you what do you want to ask me? Dude, I have lots of questions for you. We can go on go. for another hour and a half. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> Go, yeah, start, start asking. We'll see what happens. So let's go back to, uh, I want to say go back to your childhood a little bit. Um, oh. What caused you to start telling people stories about other people? Like, what what was it about storytelling that you're like, I want to do this? Oh, okay. So like when I was younger, I was very... I, I had a lot of en energy and I always wanted to know everybody, which, as we've discussed before, has its uh, pr pros, uh, pros and cons, because sometimes I'd find it hard to, like, I guess, pay attention in class. Some of my favorite subjects w w were the ones where that didn't matter as much, so, yeah. so, like, so like theater and uh, uh, drama, so, so, and then... I've always wanted, yeah, always been interested in, yeah, other people, I guess. Yeah, I'd much rather, like, have a conversation with someone than um, learn about how nitrogen goes with oxygen. A terrible example, but you, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess yeah. my curiosity of, of uh, people and, yeah, curiosity of people, yeah just curiosity of people that's awesome i'm then tied in with like one of my favorite all my some of the most memorable and impactful experiences in my life today have been in in the like the creative and the shows and the people that enjoy entertainment are a very diverse set of people probably one of the industries with the most diversity is entertainment and theater and all those sorts of things. Man, that's awesome. I love that. I can totally see you, like, writing movies for sure. Really? Yeah. 
Well, because you're so good at like sharing people's stories and so in depth and like. Wait, 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 wait. Coming soon in ten years. The two with Mike. The Dude, <laughs> let's do it. The ten year dream. That's awesome. I love it. Star Mike. And this is why network is important. Important. Because then I, I can figure it out, so I can start with some of these high profile people that have. Absolutely. Beat up the show. Why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, big, right? Uncle V, you know, he's all about buying the New York Jets and he has his Jets jerseys and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, man, why couldn't you in 10 years have a movie and have all these high profile? It's 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 actually interesting just 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 talking about him. Like, I remember at the beginning where it was like, wow, he liked to tweet about it. And now he's probably like, he just like what the other day, so he's probably like he's probably like five and six, seven of my tweets now. And I love so, it. That's so cool, man. So it's crazy how we're building this r- relationship that's going to be cemented more when when the opportunity eventually arises to meet in person. Yeah, to meet him, absolutely. I remember he sent that tweet out. I thought that was so cool. Awesome. Um, you read a lot of books. Sorry? I said you read a lot of books, yeah? No, I actually read no books. <laughs> Are you lying to me? I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> lying. I, 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 used to be, uh, I used to read a lot, of, like, when I, when I was little, when digital and technology huh. and tech wasn't as prominent. That's super funny. I was just, I just, the way you talk is so, um, like you read a lot of books. No, no, I I, I would I would disagree. I would I, I would say as I do this more and more, it's gone. It's, it's starting to go, which is where the real impact comes. It's gone be, uh, beyond. Tell us a little bit about you, like really trying to find those connections and uh, like deep, deeper meaning. And I mean, and then sometimes this doesn't always work, but sometimes you really like hit off with a guest because like. You can see parallels between both stories and just awesome. kind of like us talking. We haven't known each other that long, but it feels like we've known each other for a lot oh, longer than our ages. It's awesome, man. No, I just, I mean, I'm totally fine with that. I just, I thought you read a lot of books. That's, we, we, we should totally do that on a, like a, another, uh, probably IG, IG Live. That'd be fun, dude. You should come up with like X amount of questions and just like quick fire because sometimes you get some really good stuff. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I feel like you're going to write a leadership book eventually. No, I don't. I don't like leadership because I don't really? like, I, I don't like pressure. Yeah. Huh. Like, so I'll give you an exa- ex- example. Especially if, I, especially if it's a new, new task, so like cooking is a good example. It just happened an hour ago. I started making my lunch and I'm a little slow because I need to practice more, etc. And then the, the rest of my family came into the kitchen and now the, the space to work with this is, is like gone from this to like this. <laughs> Where's that piece of equipment? And it's like... <laughs> That's so, awesome. Uh, I would rather I'd rather be a hardworking uh, team member giving 200% than the person at, at the very top making the ultimate decisions. Because it it doesn't matter how much money like nobody's ever going to fully appreciate. It doesn't matter any company pretty much. They're not going to realize the impact that you actually had on that company. So therefore, you should, which is why I'm creating my own dream. That's cool. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Cool. That's cool. And let's wrap it up with leave the audience with one piece of advice that c- could make a difference in their life today. Don't give up on your story. I mean, that, I wish I heard that 10 years ago. <laughs> I wish I heard that, you know, 23 years ago coming out of the womb, man. Like, never give up on your story. But uh, I, I, would ca- I would agree to disagree with you on that one because. Yeah, you, you, at least I think for you, your story is 
all of the struggles that you that you went through in your like early child childhood and that's really like cementing the values in you and it it actually has a lot deeper impact because when you talk about it to people and hear their story you have a story too and that's where the real yeah the real impact happens no i got you i i just wish that someone would have told me that hey even though you're going to go through all the struggle oh okay. it's going to be really hard don't give up on your story like don't give up on on the future you know um don't get so sidetracked on what's in front of you actually focus on the future you know that kind of thing but um yeah i mean each of our stories are being like being written even now like you may have two chapters in a book that are just really negative and broken but there's always the end of that story and so i think for me that's that's more what i meant by that awesome man and this is just another moment in the story yeah that's right yeah and it's amazing well. it's amazing that you i get to be a part of your story too and what's unfolding and it's going to be amazing when you're like a keynote speaker you know for this big <laughs> it's gonna happen bro i'm telling you you think oh absolutely yeah absolutely awesome well, that, that is a great, great note to leave it on. Will I ever Three. come to <laughs> Third time, bro. It's okay. All right, we'll, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap it up here, and obviously we'll keep talking, and I'll yeah. link all of your socials. Sound good? Sweet, dude. All right, guys. Thanks uh, so much was, for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys, this was another episode of the Tea with Mike show, and make sure you go to uh, Tea with Mike. Uh, dot com to watch this one and then of course uh, you'll be able to click through to all the the uh, impact and fantastic work brandon is doing both in his uh, personal life and then also through his church stuff and then also through his brand at uh, ruach so thanks again brandon awesome mike love you dude i'll love see you, you later all right, Take care. Man. i'll see you it's the tea with mike show 